Ah. I am here with you now. Hey, Who am Max I speaking here. to? My name is Max. Hi. Greetings and blessings. Greetings and blessings. Thank you for coming. Uh, that's the first time we converse in this way. Yes. <clears throat> so, um, we are being recorded and uh, if it comes out good, uh, I will publish it on, on YouTube. Um, so how is uh, how is Nim Karali Baba? Have you do you have a good time with him? Yes, he is amazing as usual, and joyful. He uh -huh. is always full of joy and happiness and a kind word, and that is the way he always will be and he always was. Uh huh. So, um, what is your connection with him? Now you know better. I know better now that we are brothers in the spirit, but we were also in many lifetimes together. We were also rel relatives at one point, uh -huh. which I found quite surprising because I did not know that we were ever that close. Uh huh. Is he always a teacher? He is a teacher, but only in the sense that when he speaks to you, he teaches. He does not speak to you to teach, but his presence teaches. Uh huh. So uh, one of the miracles he, he did was uh, to be present in, uh, in multiple places at the same time and actually living in a parallel life. Is it, uh, was it real? Yes, it is called bilocation and it's, well, for him, it was multiple locations, uh -huh. but it is possible to do. The reason why he was able to do that is because his presence was needed for very important reasons at those times. It wasn't uh, something that was frivolous. It was something very important. And because he was needed in those places, God granted him that access. Um, so your life was uh, pretty straightforward. Yeah. And uh, uh, you did amazingly well. And some, um, Krishna Das especially, says that uh, your um, grace was essentially the translation of Nim Karali Baba's uh, presence. Is it right? I am gratified to hear that. It is a blessing to know that they could see a greater love and understanding within me than what I possessed within myself. Uh-huh. Now, now, um, I think you still made a lot of choices. Of course. And one of the choices was uh, to hide your homosexuality for a while. And it, uh, it, uh, it became, I don't think you ever, in your lectures, I don't think you ever speak about it. it it's, no. uh, it's, it's known outside, but your lectures kind of are hiding that. Is it, was it the right decision? Yes, and let me tell you why. <laughs> it was not that I was ashamed of who I was, but that I did not want others to uh, judge me or judge the spirituality through the light of something that really didn't matter. To me, sexuality wasn't the important portion of the message or important portion of who I was but that the message, that the essence was translated properly to others so that they could understand who God really was, who, what enlightenment really was, what, <coughs> what the message really was. And these things seem to distract and uh, take people's attention away from what is really, truly important. 
Of course, of course. So, I mean, that's a general question, but it's uh, absolutely important. Like, uh, what are places in your life where you did a wrong turn and uh, if you did it again, you would do it differently? A wrong turn? I would a wrong say, turn, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess that's a matter of opinion. Some <clears throat> may say uh, it was a wrong turn here or there. My own personal thought process is that um, I believe that the, the wrong turn was to actually tell people that I was homosexual too early. I see. I wanted to not be seen through eyes of sexuality, but to be seen through the eyes of the common man, through the eyes of love and spirit not through any kind of label. So leaving the label off was a good thing, but I did use it. And actually the times that I did use it was sometimes a mistake. Use what? What? Uh, you did use what? I, I just- I did it. not use the label. I see. So it was a mistake to use it sometimes because it was a selfish thing to do. You don't understand when you're being, when you're representing God, the labels can sometimes be a mistake. And that was one of my mistakes. I see. Um... So how do you see God now? Do you see God now any differently than you saw it uh, when you were in the body? Yes. Now I see that God supported me no matter what. And that he doesn't look at me with labels. He doesn't look at me with any sort of disdain or through any kind of colored glass. But he looks at me for truly who I am how I am, and the purity of the soul. God is gracious. God is giving and loving. And I see him for more of who he is now than ever before. And I thank him for the kindness that he showed me even in my humanness. One of the main teachings you did was um, to explain that each of us is uh, is the same being, and that being is God. Of course. And um, I had the recently um, a disagreement on that. Basically, not disagreement. That point was was uh, rejected by some of. Um, um, Krishna, Krishna followers. I understand. But listen and, carefully. Mm -hmm. I base it on the fact that the, the soul is created by God. Mm -hmm. God is in each of us mm -hmm. as a soul. And that makes us very much the same. Mm -hmm. We are a community. We are to be the same in many ways. Of course, we have our differences. But the idea that God lives in us the same, each and every one are to be treated the same, we should be the community together. They may reject that individuality is something that they want to express. Absolutely. Let them do so. But let them also know that God is in each of us and we show one of the facets of God through each of our personalities. Right, right. So um, the main Hindu and Buddhist uh, idea is that we should uh, exit the cycle of reincarnation as soon as possible and as gracefully as possible. And I'm not sure it's right. What do you think? It depends on what your missions are. It depends on what your truths are. Some believe in one way and some believe in another. 
And even when you come out here into the great uh, light of God, you still have your individuality and you still have some beliefs until God becomes saturated within every cell of your essence. You still will have different beliefs, different understandings, and different ways of performing, even here. So therefore, yes, you, it is good for some to leave that cycle as soon as possible. But for others, mankind would suffer if that cycle was broken too soon. So what's the role, uh, is, what is the role of, the, uh, of our civilization in, in the bigger scheme of things? The role of mankind is to become the greatest civilization that you can be. That is always the role of any civilization. It just so happens that this civilization has a greater presence in the universe than what most species and societies would have. And therefore, you are more prominent and must be of a greater example. At this point, you are not, but you will be in the future. There are more things I could say about that, but they cannot be revealed quite yet. Ah. Uh, what's, the, what's the nature of time? Is time created by, by the consciousness? There is no such thing as time if you want to uh, talk about it as a thing. It is something created by each individual. It's something created by each species. It's something created by God to keep things organized. But when you talk about time, it is all encompassing all at once. You are existing in many planes at one time, and therefore time is ridiculous. Right. So, um, to me, the human civilization is uh, is a slice of of the same universe. It's just a slice. If you slice it any differently, you would get another civilization. It's the same the same matter. Yes. Yes. The t different timelines that are there have different versions of you on them. And if you slice it one way, you see one version of yourself. And if you slice it another, you see a different version of yourself. Right now, your, your uh, destiny is to become the greatest of yourself that there can be. So I, I have trouble um, connecting to God as, as God. Yes. It's much easier to connect to some facet of it. So right. what, 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 as you are there, what's, uh, what would be your advice, I guess, for me to, to perceive God? You are correct. God sends himself to mankind in di many different ways, in many different uh, facets, if you will. That's why there are many Hindu gods, because each one of those personalities is a personality connected to God. Now, if you go to Buddhism or any other choice of religions, you will find different facets of God's personality. What you must understand is collect the ones that you believe are truly those ones that he wants to shine out as an example through you. Collect those examples and become those parts of God. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Somehow, um, 
the name is blocked in my mind at the moment, but uh, you were close to um, the uh, the person who introduced the LSD, the the professor who introduced LSD to the world. Timothy Leary. Ah, right. Yeah. Uh, and um, what was your connection to him? What is uh, how do you guys do? What, what do you guys do up there? When we speak, we talk about the importance or sometimes uh, misuse of drugs. And he actually was trying to use them in a proper way, most of the time, to connect with spirituality, dimensional <laughs> shifts, and things of this nature. He was not always doing it just for pleasure and for out of just to see what would happen. But he had a reasoning for his experimentation. Now, as he spoke to people about his reasonings for these experimentations, some misunderstood what he was trying to do and became involved in the drug epidemic because they misused uh, what he was trying to tell them and became addicted and used the drug too often. But he was trying to let them experience something different than the, what their normal lives could produce and give them a greater understanding of those things beyond their current understanding and vision. Now, when we speak to, about it here, we talk about it in a way that is enlightening, in uh, prosperous, that, that we've become different people because of the way that enlightenment has come to us. And his enlightenment came to him through this drug in some ways. His enlightenment was full in greater ways than others because of how he uh, prepared himself for the use of it. So what's the spirit of LSD? LSD is a synthetic thing, right? So it it's, doesn't have, yeah. Well, it just trans, what it does is take the mind and let the mind, uh, you, you see the mind has consciousness from all different places and times. And so it, it takes that consciousness and reveals it in a way that is very colorful and very imaginative. You see, it's not as reality would be when the brain uncovers itself with a drug, but it does show truths, it does show imagination, and it does show different dimensions, different beings, and different realities. So it takes away some of the veils, but not all of them. Correct. So in which direction would it move uh, a person? Is it, it depends uh, on yeah. the person. Mm -hmm. If you're more apt to be open in one way or another, it would, if you, let's say you are a, a fairly negative person, and you mm -hmm. would take LSD. It would probably open more negative portholes, more negative thought processes, more negative images. Of course, it might also uh, project you out of those images into a greater image for you to understand that your negativity is not as supportive to you as the positive. Now, if you are a positive person, it may show you all these great, wonderful, positive images, but then bring you to a negative side to also show you that there is um, something there that needs to be learned, that needs to be taught. So, in those streets and between the streets in, uh, in uh, sober life, Guided. You're uh, breaking up. Oh, in this street, uh, in uh, sober life and uh, who guided us? What are the main uh, consciousnesses 
that I'm in charge of talking or guiding. I cannot really understand you. You are there's a short circuit somewhere, and you're there's a lot of uh, crackling. Okay, I'll try to move away. Though. Oh, that's better. So, uh, who is guiding us? Uh, are these like spirit guys or angels or some demons? Who is uh, in charge of guiding and making sure we are going one way or another? What your belief su uh, system supports is all kinds of things. Angels do guide, spirits do guide, God does guide, Jesus does guide. Now let me tell you this, many of these things that you put out there for guidance are also within you. You must internalize those things that are guiding you in, in order for them to work. So if you do, if you say out there, there is God, Jesus, or angels, but do not bring them into your belief system or internalize them, then how are they to guide you and help you? They are just there as models for other people or models for a thought process. But you must bring them to your actual system, your personage, for them to be able to help you. Suppose there is a, a material believer, materialist, uh, non-believer, a non-believer. Who is guiding him? He is actually being guided by his creation of his own world. He is, if he believes that he can be successful without uh, talking to spirits, guides, or whatever, he is guiding himself with his soul. God is still there because God is within you, within the soul. And so he's drawing on that energy to guide him. But he's not calling it God. He's not calling it the soul. He is calling it his energy, which is without God, nothing. So uh, suppose there is like uh, many cases, like I read biographies and the person is a complete uh, non-believer. But then he looks back at the life and says, somebody guided me. Something, there was some, uh, how do you call it, providence that uh, guided him and uh, saved him and uh, prompted him to change a job and do, uh, find a wife and so on. So who is in charge of that? God, of course. Listen carefully. God tries to reveal himself to man in every way he can, at every stage of life that he can. And if he cannot get through to him until the end of his life, then so be it. But then, when he does finally get through, he lets them see that, that they were guided, that he was trying to get a hold of him, that he was there all along and that he was being ignored. Even though God was ignored, he still tries to get a hold of mankind's spirit on every occasion possible. So here is an interesting situation, like an interesting, um, uh, how do you say, uh, um, I don't know the word, a uh, situation. Uh, you said, in, 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 in the physical, you, you, were, you kept saying very frequently, uh, just because somebody died and their spirit speaks, it, it doesn't make them any smarter or their words any more important. Now, you, you died and you are speaking. And uh, how do you know that your telling is uh, more substantial than what you were saying when you were in the body? It's not more important than when I was in the body. It's just different. Let me explain. Uh -huh. When I was in the body, I had a certain belief about God and how to tell people about God, about spirit and how to tell people about spirit, about how I was being guided and how to tell people about how I am being guided. Now that I am here, I look back and see the flaws and the correct. Uh, and of those things that were correct about what I said, 
And it is still important what is being said, not only by me, but by anyone who speaks the truth. If you would speak and be guided by God, if you are speak and guided by spirit, your words are no more important than mine. <coughs> or should I say they are just as important <coughs> as mine. Yeah, as a researcher, like uh, evidence-based researcher, uh, my question would be, my question is, what have you learned after you left the body that changed your perspective? What is different now? My perspective is different because I don't see people as um, uh, the way I used to. I see them much more the same now than I used to. I used to see so many differences in people and so many samenesses. Now, when I look down at people, I understand where their souls and hearts are coming from and why they choose to do the things they do. Whereas in a person, in a body, you don't always realize or know the reasons why people act the way they do. Now I understand it much better. So do you see the spirit guides from your vantage point right now? I do. I see what you call your spirit guides, what you call your uh, belief systems. I see the energies that guide you. Oh, how do they look? How do the belief systems look? They're <laughs> different with each person because each person believes differently. There is no two people that believe exactly the same. And so the reason for that is because of the way that they were brought up that the way that they experienced truth, the way they experienced God, and the way they experienced spirit. Some of them are much greater in understanding because of the way that they encountered these things. And some of them are much farther behind because of the way they encountered <coughs> these things or the lack of these things. Mm. So, like, we have an image, I think it's pretty physical, that uh, we are surrounded by angels and spirit guys. There is a big crowd walking around, and, and on every stage they protect us and plant us and do a lot of trading of favors, like, I'll give you that, you give me that. And they kind of plan every step and every lesson for us. Is it how it is? Not really. Energies that you mm. call upon come to you. They come in the form that you wish them to be. They come in the favorable forms that you ask for. They come in ways that you want them. Now, sometimes they don't, but that is because you have decided that they haven't come that way. They don't come in armies unless you want them to. Mm, like many years ago, I was... Um walking on the street pretty desperate trying to find a job and yes. he had like no money and out of the nowhere uh, i met a friend who said yeah come to my company like i'm working in a nice company and um, i'm a bookkeeper there just join us and you will get a job and that was like really nice uh, help from nowhere so who organized that of course god did he knows that your mission is great. He knows that you need to survive. He knows that you needed to have something to move forward. He comes to you always and gives you what you need when you need it. Have faith and you will always have what you need. You may not have overabundance, but you will get what you need. So it wasn't um, uh, a complicated arrangement between spirit guides, my spirit guides, the other spirit guides. It wasn't individuals involved in the other side. Why would it be? It's not complicated to uh, believe in God. It's not complicated to know that your spirits are with you and helping you. 
it's not complicated to understand that goodness will follow you if you if you are meant and want and desire the good things for yourself but also are asking help from god he will give you the desires of your heart maybe not in the way that you perceive are his gifts but he does give them <coughs> now would it be advisable to um give away the desires and uh, try to be the expression of god yes let me explain whatever you give you will receive back if you give love you'll get it back you may not get it back in the form of love but you may as you give things to the world everything will be returned in one way or another so being the example of god you will get back many things and you will prosper uh, now when marijuana became legal in in many places um and i clearly see how it uh, harms people but also it can be used as a great uh, awakening tool and i see how it sort of dissolves the reality and um, disconnects me from from the physicality unfortunately i'm allergic to it so i cannot use much of it but when i use it i feel like the physical world just you know falls apart and doesn't come back completely so what's the, what's the nature and the, the um how they say what's the um yeah what's uh, the mission what's the mission of the marijuana as a, as a as a plant and as a substance marijuana is a comfort um but it's like any other drug if you use it properly it can bring you bring about the things that are desired meaning that it can bring comfort peace um good thoughts and and warm feelings but if it's misused it can bring disease How about the psilocybin uh, mushroom? Psilocybin mushroom. Um, but can, the same. Oh, go ahead. Are, are you uh, are you in um, co connection with McKen Terence McKenna? Yes, I know who he is. We are we are connected in ways. Uh, Timothy Leary and him and I and others discuss the use of such drugs on the earth and. we have all experienced uh some of these things uh by uh, mm, on purpose let's put it that way by purpose and we have all put our own thought processes into uh the use of them and why we use them and uh the thought processes that came out of the use of these particular drugs now the mushrooms are much more they are psychedelic but they're much mellower than acid they they bring in the thought processes in a different way they they connect with different parts of the brain more of the emotional areas less intellectual areas does that make sense uh -huh. so it is uh, a much warmer uh but still very pleasant experience so uh marijuana and mushrooms are real genetic communities correct are, are they like um, intellectually involved in the process are are they involved in the process of what you are experiencing yeah in some ways yes because of their of their dna so to speak of their makeup what they what they are part of and how they connect with humanity so are the mushrooms sort of uh, give uh, people a trip into their 
in the, to their reality? They can. Not always do they do that, but it is possible for them to do that. Yes, it is a, a reality. So McKenna was thinking that mushrooms are, are the, the key answer for the ascension and uh, uh, awakening. Uh, well, the thing is, they are not the key answer for the ascension. The key answer for the ascension is actually faith love, understanding, and God. But it does open the areas of love and compassion and those things to a greater extent so that they can experience the ascension and uh, be part of it in a greater way. There are some that do not need that to, to experience the ascension in, in a greater way. They can just do it naturally, but the others may need this to open themselves up to it in a greater way. Um, what's your connection to India? Um, yeah, incarnationally, how much I you connect with India? Uh, I studied some of the Indian cultures and Hinduism and uh, uh, the Sumerian tablets. Uh, the writings from the Sumerian, uh, not so, uh, uh, what's the, the word? Uh, I, I studied some of their writings over there and I, I felt a great connection to it because it was very enlightened, it was very advanced in its thought process, it was uh, intellectual, but yet it had purpose. It wasn't just there to be there, it had a purpose, it had enlightenment, it had spirit, it had uh, advancement. Uh, do you know your incarnations uh, in India? Um, yes, but I am not, I, I do not want to say what they were. Yeah, um, can you meet yourself in the past incarnation? Can you kind of meet yourself face, face to face and be two different people? Can I mute myself? No, meet, meet, um, meet. Ah, meet myself. Yeah. Um, there are fractions of us in other people sometimes. And yes, there are, is a fraction of me somewhere else and I can meet them in spiritual sense. Yes. So I just wonder if uh, your past incarnation is still a, an ind individual or it's like this old now. Uh, an individual. So would you be able to meet yourself in the past I, life? I have. In the spirit, I have met myself, but not in uh, physical. Uh, did you see the physicality? Or, I mean, the, the shape of the yes. body? Or is it like more like a, a cloud? Yes. A cloud? It's, it's a physical body, yes. Uh, so can you talk to yourself, to your past incarnation? Yes, I can go back to my past incarnations and speak to individual uh, versions of my past. What are they doing? Are they kind of fading away? No. They're as real now as they always will be. Are they following, following the progress of their uh, history? They are, they are complete in who they are. There is no adding or subtracting to their life as they were lived, as they lived it. But there is much to learn from the life that was lived at that time. And I can see their fullness, and, uh, but they do not change, no. So you do not change either? No. <laughs> I change only as I learn about God. That is a change. But my being as i look back on earth that being does not change that's complex so you are not that being you're someone else i am not that being at the moment no i see uh-huh i see uh-huh so um whew. Uh, extraterrestrials, did you uh, 
how, what was your connection with extraterrestrials in the in the in, in this life? I did not have much connection with extraterrestrials in this past life, but uh -huh. I did believe in them, and I did understand that they were also spiritual beings. Uh huh. I uh, I feel a great um. um I, I really love spiritual teachers who are Jewish. And yes. you, you and Krishna Das, Krishna Das and Ram Das uh, are my favorite because you uh, speak my language, like intellectual language, and you analyze everything to, to like, uh, very scientifically. Yes. And, and I was is very scientific, yes. Yeah. Makena is not a Jew, but uh, he, he's also my favorite. Yes. He's Irish, Irish, Scottish, I think. Well, you can so, tell that I am scientific in my approach. Of course. Uh huh. So, um, uh, what is that? I I, I assume that J the Ashkenazi came uh, from the from the stars pretty recently. Do you know any 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 details about that? I am not allowed to disclose that. Ah. But I believe <laughs> that it, our time is done, and I will leave you now. Oh, but I would like to speak to you again sometime. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much for coming. Um, it was great to connect you, to you this way. Um, I hope help. that we can connect again. And I see that you are a growing spirit, a fire, and I appreciate your scientific studies and your reasons for science oh thank you yeah uh come come as a uh, come to me to help with my uh yeah part of my discovery is uh the nature of consciousness by uh by great luck i stumbled upon the molecular nature of consciousness which is great yes and it is related to actually to psychedelics really tightly yes so, so i invite you to be inspired in that uh, that that part of the work and any other part of the work. Well, I hope I was a help to you today. Thank you. Uh, thank you for coming. I, I will speak again. Thank you. <laughs>